Okay, um, let's continue with the properties of correlated RW. First property here is proportionality property still holds since correlation fades over time. So I introduced this proportionality between time and the distance between the start point and end point of a random walk. And it was for simple random walk. It was not for correlated random walk. Why does it still hold in a correlated random walk? Because, because although consecutive or you can say um, uh, successive, let's just say successive steps in a correlated random walk, they are correlated with each other in terms of direction because um, each step's direction is based on previous step, uh, steps direction with a specific turn angle. So successive steps, they are correlated with each other. No problem with that. But, but if the step number is large enough, you will say that this correlation disappears when the time is long enough, when the steps, when the number of steps is large enough, okay? Successive steps are likely to be in the same or similar direction, which means that there is still correlation between successive steps. Steps further apart will be less strongly aligned, which means that um, if you choose step one and step two, okay, of course they're uh, strongly correlated. But if you compare step one and step 100, you will probably find a huge difference in terms of the direction of the first step and the 100th step. Because after each step, there is a small change of direction and this change will accumulate and it becomes larger and larger. And uh, if you compare step one and step 100 or even uh, step 200, you will probably find out a huge difference in terms of direction. And this is called the fading of correlation over time. After 200 steps, the direction changed a lot. Depending on the turn angle distribution, at some sufficient long separation, steps become uncorrelated, okay? Here, um, I'm going to show you this, uh, this model. Uh, standard deviation angle five, aggregation length 50. Let me find it, uh, five and 50, okay? Five and uh, 50. What does it mean? Let me run this first, set up, okay? Now we have a lot of small orange points here. Let me zoom in. Okay, each point is a step, okay? So what's the meaning of this aggregation? Aggregation means that we're going to combine several steps into one step. 50 here means that uh, after this simulation, I will just combine 50 small steps and consider them as one huge step, which means that if we do this, we have some what? Red lines. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, blue lines, okay? And uh, let me find an example, a proper example here. Uh, how about this? Okay, here, we can say, here is a blue line from this point to that point, okay? Because it's an aggregation of 50 steps, I'm pretty sure that we have 50 orange points between the, the, the start and end point of this segment of blue line, because this blue line is an aggregation of 50 small steps. So you can see that, let's just, let's just assume the first step is here. Next step, next orange point. And uh, you can see that this successive points, successive steps, they are generally along the same direction, but with small change. And after 50 steps, small change, small change, small change. After 50 steps, the direction changed dramatically. At the very beginning, the direction is along this direction, right? But in the end, the direction is this. 
And uh, if you, uh, I mean, aggregate these 50 steps and make it one step, you are not stepping along this direction. You are stepping along this direction, along the direction of this blue line. So successive steps, they are correlated with each other for sure. And here we have a very small standard deviation angle, which means that the correlation is very strong. The turn angle cannot vary in a large range. It varies in a very small range. That's the reason why if you compare two consecutive or two successive, um, two successive uh, steps, the directions of them are very similar because we have very small value of standard deviation angle. But if you aggregate 50 steps, it's a huge change. And there is correlation between the first, the, the, the first step and the next step. Okay, now why I'm talking about first step and next step, it's based on this blue line. It's an aggregation of 50 steps. And now it's two steps, the first step, the next step. There is no correlation anymore. Okay, let's get back to the slides. Proportionality property still holds, not for correlated RW, for say for correlated RW, but with pretty long time because the correlation phase over time. When the time is long enough, when the time is long enough, there is no correlation anymore. Okay, that's the reason why proportionality was for simple random walk, but it is still true for correlated random walk. Because as, uh, as long as the T is large enough, the correlation fades. Okay, so that's the meaning of this property. That's the meaning of this property. And uh, um, let's just continue. There is also something called persistence length. The distance, or you can say the number of steps at which correlation disappear. In the last slide, we, 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 we learned that the correlation will eventually fade when the time is long enough. And uh, when it completely disappears from a specific step, the number of steps so far is called the persistence length. Highly correlated RWs have longer persistence lengths. It makes sense, right? And uh, the expected distance is longer than simple random walk by a scale factor. That is a function of the angle correlation. So here is a table from the textbook. I'm going to um, explain it here. So the first column is turn angle sigma. Sorry, I call it delta in the last video. It should be sigma. Sigma is a great letter for standard deviation, okay? It's different from, um, it's similar uh, to, 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 to delta, but it's actually six sigma. So turn angle from 10 to 90, you can see that the standard deviation is increasing along the column, right? So the second column is R. R is the, co uh, is the direction correlation between two successive steps. If the turn angle is very small, it makes sense that R is high. R is somewhere between zero and one. It means that the direction, the directions of, of two successive steps are very similar. So their correlation is very strong. It makes sense that if uh, sigma increases, this correlation becomes uh, weaker and weaker. And here is the scale factor. Right, it's defined by this formula. Here is 11.5. What does it mean? What does it mean? It means that now it's a correlated random walk, right? The distance is 11.5. If that's the distance for this random walk with this sigma value, then within the same time, a simple random walk will only move for one unit. And this random walk moved what? Moved 11.5 unit. So it's a scale factor. 
the expected distance of a correlated random walk is longer than simple random walk by a factor. This is a factor. And this factor is decided by the co direction correlation between two successive steps. And this R value is decided by another thing, by turn angle. The smaller the turn angle, the stronger the correlation shape. OK? OK. So here, we have even more examples here. Let's focus on figure A. We have different uh, lines and curves here, firstly. Here we have the, the upper dash line. It is addressing the relationship between time and distance, and it is for linear movement, straight line movement. Uh, the longer the time, uh, the longer the distance, right? Uh, the relationship is straightforward, it's a straight line, okay? We have another dash line here. It's for square root of t. This dash line addresses the relationship between t and the distance if the walk is a simple random walk, is a simple random walk. So these two dash lines, they are forming this envelope, okay? They are forming this envelope. So here, root mean square distance. This black solid line is root mean square distance, okay? This line is addressing the relationship between t and distance if your walk is not linear movement, is not simple random walk, it is a correlated random walk. Of course, this black curve here, this black solid line here, is for the ideal situation. But how about this gray curves? They are the actually observed relationship between t and distance from what from simulations from simulations and you can say uh, most of these gray lines they are actually following this black solid line which is the ideal situation ideal relationship between uh, t and distance one the, the walk is a correlated random walk but we can say there are there there are also outliers right some gray lines they're dropping far away from this uh, solid black line. And one of them dropped a lot, which means that even with a specific standard deviation angle for A is only 10 degree, it means that um, it's not likely that two successive uh, steps, their directions will be very different from each other. But still, it's possible. It's possible that for example, here, here is a huge drop in 50 steps, in 50 steps, which means that in these 50 steps, most, uh, most change of directions, most changes of directions, they are very huge, right? Very close to 10 degree. And it happened uh, successively for many steps. That makes this work very unpredictable. You can see the distance dropped a lot in 50 steps, okay? So uh, what if we change this sigma to even larger value, 30 degree, 50 degree? Here we have results. We have results. You can say it's even more unstable or less stable for these simulations. If your um, turn angle is within 30 degree, a lot of simulations, they are having very short distance after 200 steps, you can say vertical axis is for distance, right? If you change it to even 50 degree, at the very beginning, there could be a huge drop of distance. Even within 10 steps, a lot of walks, the, chain, uh, the, 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 the variation of distance is very dramatic, we, even within 10 walks, 10 steps, 10 steps, sorry. So here you can say the importance of sigma. Okay, if you want to make sure that your, your persistence distance of a correlated random walk is long, if you want to make sure that um, 
your correlated random walk is relatively stable in terms of walking distance, you have to make sure that your sigma value is relatively small to make sure that successive steps, they are correlated, they're more correlated to each other in terms of, um, in terms of the direction. Okay, so this is um, another property of correlated random walk. Okay, I'll just stop here. And next video, I'm going to start with dependent random walks. Okay, thank you.